right, so this is our lesson video for section 10.3. This video, because the section is so incredibly long, is going to be broken into three different videos. So in our first video, we are going to focus on percent composition. I'm going to show you two different ways, depending on what information you're given, um, on how to solve these problems. So two things that you'll want out during this lesson video are a periodic table and a calculator. Um, you possibly may also need a polyatomic ion sheet. We'll see if I put any in here. All right, so the percent of mass or percent composition, you'll hear it stated both ways, of an element in a compound is the number of grams of the element divided by the mass in grams of the compound multiplied by 100. So in other words, our formula is the percent mass of the element equals the mass of the element over the mass of the compound times 100. So I'm just going to kind of write that over here so we can refer to it without me having to click back. So our percent composition equals the mass of the element over the mass of the compound times 100. Okay, and it's just how you would do any percentage. Like if I said, what percentage of our class is girls? We would count how many girls, we would count how many total students, and then we would do number of girls divided by total students times 100. Then if we want to know boys, we could do the same thing. Count the number of boys, total, divide, times 100. Um, and so that's the same way that it works here. We're just using elements instead. So it says, when a 13.60 gram sample of a compound containing only magnesium and oxygen is decomposed, 5.4 grams of oxygen is obtained. What is the percent composition of this compound? All right, so what we have here is we have our whole compound. They told us that we have a 13.60 gram sample of our whole compound. And they told us that it only contains magnesium and oxygen. When it was decomposed, 5.40 grams of it was oxygen. So what are we missing? We're missing magnesium. So before you start one of these problems, you need to know the mass of the whole compound, which we do, and the mass of each element involved. So we know oxygen, we don't know magnesium. Well, they told us that the compound only has magnesium and oxygen. So if we know how much oxygen, we can just subtract to get the amount of magnesium. So once I subtract this number, I'm gonna get 8.2 grams of magnesium. So see, now I know my whole compound, I know how much oxygen, and I know how much magnesium. So I'm ready to start the problem. So when it asks for percent composition, unless it specifies a particular element, you have to do it for each element involved. So we have to do one for magnesium and one for oxygen. So we're just going to follow our formula. So I'm going to start with magnesium. So my percent composition for magnesium would be mass of that element. So if you look, I have 8.2 grams of magnesium over the mass of the whole compound. Well, they told me the whole compound is 13.6. I'm not going to put a substance because we don't know what the compound is, although most likely it's MgO because that's how they naturally combine. Times 100. And so once I do that, I just divide and solve and I get 60. 0.3% of magnesium. So what I want you to notice is the number unit substance, 60.3% gets you half off. You've got to tell me of which element you're talking about. All right, so now I just need to do the same thing for oxygen. So my percent of oxygen, I follow my same formula, is mass of the element. So I had 5.4 grams of oxygen over mass of the whole compound which is 13.6 times 100. So I just divide and multiply by 100. And for oxygen, I get 39.7% for oxygen. So again, notice, number, unit, substance. Putting oxygen over here doesn't count in your answer, okay? Make sure you have your elements in your answer. Number, unit, substance. Now, a way to check your answer is to then add them because what should percentages always add to equal? 100. So when you add 60.3 and 39.7, you get 100%. Now, sometimes, depending on how you round, you might get like 99.8 or 
or 100.3, that's fine. But if you add yours and get 76%, then obviously you did something wrong. Okay, so always check your percentages at the end and make sure they equal 100. Now you can still miss it if they do equal 100, but you know, you know you missed it for sure if they don't equal so let's look at a couple more examples. Make sure you give yourself a chance to try some on your own. So maybe watch me do one more and then try this last one on your own. So it says a compound formed when 9.03 grams of magnesium, so we know we have that much magnesium, um, combines completely with 3.48 grams of nitrogen. What is the percent composition of this compound? So notice here they gave me both the elements. They gave me the magnesium and the nitrogen, but they didn't give me the whole compound. Well, if I know that magnesium and nitrogen bonded to make the compound, I can just add the two and get the compound amount. Okay, so if you're missing one of the elements, do compound minus element to get your other element. If you're missing the total compound, just add your elements together. So once we add those together, we get 12.51 grams of our whole compound. So in this case, again, I still have two elements, so to do percent composition, I'm going to have two answers. All right, I'm just going to start with magnesium again. So my percentage of magnesium is the mass of the element. So in this case, I have 9.03 grams of magnesium over the mass of the whole compound. So we added up and said, well, the mass of the whole compound is 12.51 grams times 100, of course, to get a percentage. And so once I did that, I got 72.2% magnesium. Okay, so again, number unit substance. Notice that the grams cancel, so your unit should not be grams. Whenever you solve for a percentage, your unit is percent, but don't forget the substance. All right, so next part is I'm going to move on to nitrogen. So my percentage of nitrogen is mass of the element, so I have three 0.48 grams of nitrogen over mass of the whole compound. I have 12.51 grams of the whole compound times 100. So once I divide and multiply for nitrogen, I end up with 27.8% nitrogen. And then what should you do at the end? Add to make sure you get approximately 100. Okay, and notice I have number, unit, and substance for each one. All right, so if you haven't tried one on your own, try this last one on your own real quick. I'll assume you've done that, and we'll do it together. So it says, when a 14.2 gram sample of mercury 2 oxide, so that's our compound. It didn't say the word compound, but I can see it contains multiple elements, mercury and oxygen. It's decomposed into its elements by heating 13.2 grams of mercury is obtained, what is the percent composition of this compound? Well, we know the mercury, 13.2. We know the whole compound was 14.2, so what are we missing? We're missing the oxygen. It's mercury 2 oxide. That means oxygen is one of them. So how can we get that? We can just subtract. So 14.2 minus 13.2 is 1 gram of oxygen. So now we have our mercury, our oxygen, and our whole compound. It has two elements, so again, I'm going to have two answers. So I'm just going to start with mercury. So percent of mercury is the mass of the element. So I have 13.2 grams of mercury over the mass of the whole compound. The whole compound was 14.2 times 100. And so for mercury, I end up getting about 93%. All right, notice the number of unit substance, 93% mercury. All right, whew, we're running out of room here. I'll cram oxygen at the bottom. All right, so I'm going to do oxygen. So remember, it's mass of the element. So in this case, I have one gram of oxygen over mass of the whole compound, which again is 14.2 grams times 100. And so for oxygen, I get about 7% oxygen. So notice, number of units substance. And of course, 93 and 7 give us 100. Now, <coughs> sorry, some of you may be wondering, well, once I get the 93, can't I just do 100 minus 93 to get the 7? Yes, you can do that. However, if you accidentally made a math mistake here, you have no way of checking your answer. Because, of course, if you just do 100 minus that, 
your other answer is going to give you that plus that gives you 100. Okay, so I always like to do two separate problems and then add to make sure that I didn't make any math errors. Alright, so this is one way to do percent composition where they gave us numbers, they gave us masses to work with. Sometimes they won't give you any masses. So let's look at how to do that type. So the problem is going to be the same. Like we're going to use the same formula. We're going to follow the same steps. It's just we're going to have to get the masses ourselves. So where can you find masses for elements? On the periodic table. So make sure you have a periodic table available. And again, my answers may be slightly different depending on how rounded. So if a percent composition problem does not give you the exact masses of the elements, then you can use the molar masses instead. And so those just come from the periodic table. We use the same formula for percent composition, mass of element over mass of compound times 100. We're just going to pull our atomic mass instead of it giving us any masses in the problem. Now, don't mix those two up. Like on the previous ones, if I give you masses, you only use the masses from the problem. Don't use the periodic table. Notice, on the previous ones we just did, we didn't use the periodic table at all. If I don't give you masses, you use the periodic table then. So this is what it might look like. So it says calculate the percent composition of propane, which I told you is C3H8. All right, so notice I gave you no masses in the problem. So remember, we need the mass of each element and the mass of the whole compound. So let's do some molar mass here. So we know it's C3H8. So carbon is 12, then I'm going to multiply that by 3. Hydrogen is 1, then I'm going to multiply it by 8. Remember, 12 and 1 just come from the atomic mass on the periodic table. All right, so once I multiply and add those together, I'm going to get 44 grams per mole. Because we're at molar mass, the unit is grams per mole. But it's important to notice that I have 36 grams per mole for carbon, and I have 8 grams per mole for hydrogen. Okay, I don't have 1 for hydrogen or 12 for carbon. All right, so now I know the mass of each element. Carbon's 36, hydrogen's 8, and the mass of the whole thing. The whole thing is 44. So now I'm ready to start. So I'm going to do carbon first. So my percent for carbon is my mass of that element. So remember, carbon is not 12. We have three of them, so it's 36. All right, so I'm going to do 36 grams per mole for carbon over the whole compound. Well, the whole compound is 44. And then times 100. So my grams per mole, of course, cancel because my unit's going to be percentage. And so my percentage is 81.82% carbon. So don't forget, number, unit, substance. All right, so now I'm going to do hydrogen. So my percentage for hydrogen is the mass of the element. In this case, hydrogen is not 1 because I have 8 of them. So it's 8 grams per mole. All right, divided by my whole compound. See, mass of compound, which is 44 and then times 100. So my grams per mole again cancel. So once I divide and multiply, I end up getting 18.18% hydrogen. So number of unit substance. And of course, when you add them, you will get approximately 100%. So common mistakes on this are putting in 12 for carbon, because you forget to multiply by the subscript, or putting in one for hydrogen. Other common mistakes are if I don't give you the formula. If I give you the name, a lot of you have trouble writing the correct formula. So again, if you're having trouble writing formulas from names, you need to go back to chapter nine lesson videos. All right, so let's move on and try a couple more. All right, so it says calculate the percent composition of sodium hydrogen sulfate. Wow, there is no formula, there are no masses. So remember, we're going to pull the masses from the periodic table, but you have to be able to write the formula. If you write the formula wrong, you're going to get your answers wrong. And that's the most common thing. Like if this was on a test, that's the most common reason people miss it. They know how to use the formula and pull the masses from the periodic table, but they get the formula wrong. All right, so sodium is in a, has a positive one charge. Hydrogen sulfate is on your polyatomic ion sheet. It is H. SO4, negative one charge. So we have positive one, negative one. So first, I need to go ahead and figure out the masses of all my elements and the whole compound. So sodium's 23, hydrogen's 1, sulfur's 32, 
Oxygen is 16, but I have 4, so I'm going to do 16 times 4. All right, so once I do all that, let's see what my answer is. I ended up getting 120. Okay, so I have my elements. Sodium's 23, hydrogen's 1, sulfur's 32, oxygen is 64. Okay, you got to be careful. A lot of you, when you get to oxygen, you plug in 16. Well, you have 16 times 4, so it's 64. So see, if you did that at the end when you add up, you're not going to get 100%. So that's why I'm telling you, add up at the end to check your answer. All right, so I'm just going to go in order. We have to do NAH, S, and O. Wow, we got to do it four times. So if you want to pause the video and try it on your own, this is good practice. All right, so I'm going to start with sodium. So remember, it's mass of the element. So for sodium, I have 23 grams per mole over the whole thing, which is 120 times 100. So my grams per mole, of course, cancel, and so I end up with 19.17% sodium. Remember, make sure you're putting number, unit, substance. All right, now I move on. So hydrogen, my percent for hydrogen is mass of the element, which for hydrogen in this case is just one, over mass of the compound, which is 120, times 100, my grams per mole cancel. So for hydrogen, I end up with 0.83% hydrogen. Oops, sorry, that's a percent, not a six. <laughs> All right, so now I have sodium, I have hydrogen. I'm gonna move on to sulfur. So my percent of sulfur is mass of the element. In this case, it's 32. Over mass of the whole compound, which again is just 120 times 100. My grams per mole cancel, and for sulfur, I end up getting about 26.67% sulfur. Oof, running out of room here. Sorry, y'all. So, again, notice I have number unit substance, and then last one is oxygen. So, for oxygen, I do mass of my elements. So, this is where a lot of people mess up. They want to put in 16. But remember, you have four oxygens. So, oxygen actually has 64 grams per mole. You have to take into account those subscripts. Over the whole thing, my whole compound is 120 grams per mole times 100. And so, for oxygen, I end up with 53.33% oxygen. Don't forget, number unit and substance. All right, and if you add up all four numbers, you'll get approximately 100. All right, so last one. On this one, it actually tells me specifically it only wants the percent composition of nitrogen. So thank goodness we only have to do one answer for this one. All right, so it says calculate the percent composition of nitrogen in ammonium nitrate. So ammonium is a polyatomic ion. It's NH4 with a positive one charge. Nitrate is also a polyatomic ion. It's NO3 with a negative one charge. So positive one and negative one cancel. So this is my formula. So next, let's get our masses. So nitrogen's 14. Hydrogen's 1, but I'm going to multiply it by 4. Remember, I'm just pulling these numbers from the bottom number on the PR table. Nitrogen again is 14. Oxygen is 16, but I'm going to multiply it by 3. Once I do all that, I end up with about 80. 80 grams per all right, it asked me about nitrogen, so this is where you have to be careful because nitrogen is in two places. So it's not 14, it's actually 28. Does so everybody see that? Because you have two nitrogens. They just don't happen to be next to each other, so we just combine them together. All right, so I don't have to do N, H, and O. Since it only asked me about nitrogen, I just have to do N. So my percent for nitrogen is, of course, my mass of the element. So we've decided that nitrogen is actually 28 here there's two nitrogens. So it's 28 grams per mole for nitrogen over the whole compound, which is 80 times 100. And so once we do that, I end up with about 35% for nitrogen. So number of unit substance. So be careful and don't waste your time. If I ask you specifically for an element, you only have to do that element. 
If I just say percent composition of the whole thing, like on this one, unfortunately you have to do every element. All right, but both ways use the same formula. It's just if I give you masses, you use my masses, like in our first examples. If I don't give you masses, you use the periodic table's atomic masses, like in these examples. So hopefully you're able to follow this formula. This formula will be on your formula sheet, so you don't need to memorize.